Welcome to the Metal Maven Podcast, where we explore and discover the process and passions of artists in the metal music and art community. In episode 12 of Metal Maven Podcast, I'm joined by the talented Fabienne Erni, who sings and plays in Swiss folk metal band Elveti. Illumi Shade is her latest project, which we'll discuss in much more detail today. I'm so excited to have you here, Fabi. How are you? Hello. Thank you. I'm very good. I'm super excited to be here and thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I'm pretty excited to talk more with you about Illumi Shade. And I guess before we get into it, let's begin with your background for anyone listening who may not know you. For as musical as you are, you grew up in a non-musical family. I guess it's just you and your brother who are into music. Yeah, exactly. Just just us two. I don't know why, but <laughs> somehow we ended up with music and everybody else not really. So, yeah. <laughs> so you began formal training, uh, formal vocal training around 15 years old. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I just started to get into singing when I was around, you know, 12 teenager and then I just felt like I think I want music to be a huge part of my life and I was getting a bit nerdy with singing techniques I'm always very interested in uh, exploring the vocals how you can produce uh, sound in a healthy way and just stuff like that and yeah so I, I ended up taking a lot of uh, singing lessons I had a really great teacher um, when I was around 15 what was it 16 yeah and and then I, I went to, uh, uh, to study singing for three months in Copenhagen in a technical singing school, complete vocal technique. There I learned so much and I was sure, okay, I really want to become a singing teacher or something like that. Just so music will be the biggest part of my life. Uh, so how I can make a living or yeah. And yeah, this is how it developed. And then in the end, I, I ended up studying um, at the music high school, maybe you could call it, or university. Yeah, pop singing, actually. And now I just did my degree, yay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> last September. And yeah, now now I'm off school and free. <laughs> so do you, do you have students that you're teaching right now? Uh, you know, I don't really have a lot of time. I think I will start again during this year, just a few private students. I had a few during my studies, but yeah, I don't have time to teach in a school or so. And when I can uh, make music and don't have to teach, it's good for me. I like it. <laughs> but yeah, just maybe a few a few students in. Yeah, that, that would be nice. Maybe someday. Yeah. Just a little bit, because you have a lot going on. So you have, you know, you have LVT, you have, now you have Illumi Shade, and then in between, you can have a little, a little sprinkling of students in there. Yeah, exactly. This is my, my plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. So our connection here to the main topic is Jonas, Jonas Wolf, who's the guitarist of LVT. He actually helped you get into the band in 2017, and now... He's with you on this new project, a new exciting project, Illumi Shade. So how and when did the idea of Illumi Shade take form? Thanks to Jonas. Yeah, he he um, introduced me to Krigel. He showed the video of me singing. And then this is how everything uh, like started to roll. And in the end, they chose me as a singer. So, yeah. And then I had to do my master degree, right, uh, from my studies. And there the thesis or however you will call it is actually we have to make like 40 minutes of music in whatever way. And I want to do a metal rock pop project <laughs> and um, with a band so I had to write the uh, music and yeah since we were traveling so much last year with Elveti um, I think it was the craziest year for me last year I was getting a bit panicky and you know how, how do I manage to organize everything when I'm not home a lot and la la la. So I was like, hey, let's team up with with Jonas. <laughs> he has to now. <laughs> and um, so this is how we started it together. So he went to the same university that you were studying your master's degree in, is that? 
Uh -huh, yeah, well, actually, he, he did it like five years before me, and but now he is uh, sometimes teaching there. So he's still connected with the university there. We know the same people. I didn't know him that well before Elvati. I just knew his name and who he is. But since now, since three years, uh, we are, of course, uh, spending a lot of time together on the road. And yeah, this, this is how um, he also ended up in this project. <laughs> Well, he must have known how tough it was having gone through it himself. So, Yes, exactly. He did it uh, five years ago. And yeah, I think he was excited to, to help and to do this. Yeah, I think we are a really good team. It, it matches really well. The songwriting process and everything, it's a lot of fun. And I'm super happy that uh, we can do this together. And with the other musicians from the band, it's just really awesome. Yeah, it's a very good vibe. And the other members, they also were are from the university there. And so we know each other since, since years. And it's actually super nice. Mm -hmm. Right. So what does what does the name Illumi Shade mean? And were there any literary or musical inspirations that helped move this concept forward? Well, I had like a little vision before I started with everything. And it was just like a sketch of a, of a story that I wanted to explain in songs. And this, this story is about the, the light and the shadow that is, you know, uh, moving with the time and how they interact with each other and that light has its positives and negatives and dark as well. And both is needed so the world can exist. And just, you know, it's about the contrast, not only in the world, like story-wise, but also contrasts musically because I discovered that I really love to sing metal and hard music and um, but I also have a very soft side and I love cheesy ballads and I think just the whole concept of this band is with contrasts <laughs> so you know from a heavy heavy riffs but also the ballads or about story-wise from the you know the the light and then the dark is taking over but then light comes yeah like it's like it's like finding the balance and that ebb and flow of it there's you know sometimes there's more than the other but eventually it balances itself out thank you this is exactly this <laughs> yeah exactly so this is why illumi shade <laughs> actually pretty simple yeah so illuminate and then then shade then darkness so yeah exactly the contrasts mm-hmm so it's one thing to have an idea like this, but this level of creation requires like passion and dedication for intricacies. So outside of the musical sphere, like you're making a fantasy realm seem and feel tangible. World building is an intense process and encapsulates like culture, physics, geography, cosmology within a construct. So what was your process when creating the world of Illumi Shade? Yeah, it was an intense process. It still is, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I had this this rough idea about a story and I really wanted to create a world, but alone I could never do it. I don't have the time. I, I'm not structured enough <laughs> so so yeah Tamara my my best friend I I remember we were on a city trip together actually in Milano and I started to talk with her about it and she was totally getting into it and we were discussing it for the whole night and everything and since then I am working or we are working with her all the time she is kind of managing our project and taking care of the the creation of the world we work now with a concept writer from Canada um, like very closely together you know back and forth uh, with inputs and yeah so she is a very, very important part of this this project, and it's very nice to have a, have it with my best friend. You know, uh, it's it's very intense, but we get to know each other even better now, and it's yeah, it's just super cool that we can uh, we have one goal and we all work towards that. Yeah, but as I said, we have a concept writer. We we you know we wrote this ideas that we have and now she gave her inputs and we gave our inputs again and back and forth and this is how we will yeah we are creating it at the moment and even more will be revealed in the future then yeah so you basically you needed like a lore keeper someone to keep the story kind of in the background of it consistent and then to help you so you could focus on the music side because 
you have these two sides that are very intense and they need that attention to detail. So at first, yeah, at first I was like, is she doing both of these things? Because that's crazy. <laughs> like crazy, awesome, but that's a lot of work. Well, yeah, this is why we, we can split it. You know, Tamara is taking care a lot about, because we do everything by ourselves, you know, no label, nothing. So it's so much work. And of course, when I think back, when I heard it from friends that do this, they have a band and do everything by themselves. Of course, I think, yeah, it's, it must be a lot of work when you, when you actually have to do it. I don't know how you could do it all alone. So I'm so happy that we have this, I call it always army, <laughs> like, you know, of people that are working towards the same goal and, you know, in interaction, of course, like uh, we are always in contact and um, it's very important that uh, every opinion has its place. But um, also that I know this is my main subject. I have to take care and Tamara takes care of that. Jonas takes care of that, you know, just like a team. So let's kind of get into this enchanted world that's been created. So there's five main tribes. So there's the Halusha, Feva, Yagun, Vaina, and Tishai. Very good, yeah. <laughs> so do all of the band members form the core tribe above all of these other tribes called the Illumi Order? Or is it the entirety of all tribes working together to keep the balance in the Illumi Shade? So... Okay, so we have the order and each band member is the chosen one from a tribe, right? So, for example, Miriam, she is doing the orchestration and playing synth and piano and stuff. She, for example, she is from Feva and she is at the moment the chosen one from the Feva to be in the Illumi. And then you get a certain superpower or you have more power and these together in the Illumi order, we make sure that the crystal, the heart of the world stays safe, right? And Halusha, uh, Tamara, for example, she is Halusha. <laughs> she is a, from, from the tribe Halusha. She, but she's not in the band, you know, she, she's not on stage, right? But she is a super, super important role in, in our project. So the Halushas, they choose the people from the tribes, you know, they choose a few and then they have to make a test and then the chosen one will be in the Illumi. And this is us, the band. So there's also further kind of class designations that you've mentioned. So there's the bound, the patron, the sage, the scout and the spirit. Everybody can learn more about these classes on Instagram or the website. But I wanted to dive into your character, the guardian. So you are the strongest warden of Illumi Shade in the physical realm. You possess all the abilities, skills, and assets of every tribe. So I know that there's chosen ones from each tribe, but there's only one guardian. Yes, yes, exactly. I am also part of the Illumi, of course, uh, but I, I am the only one that can touch the crystal, the heart of the world. And I am the guardian of the crystal, like right there. You know, and the crystal is the most sacred thing on, on this earth, because if the crystal breaks, then the world falls apart. Then it's the world's end. So your powers are obtained through the ritual of Halusha. So it's a transformation which I'm assuming is overseen by the Halusha tribe. So the first beings of Illumi Shade and the most elusive, actually. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So... Will we see or hear the story of your ascension to Guardian in this album? Actually, not on this album, but we already have so many ideas for next upcoming albums. And this will, of course, be one topic once. Yes, but on this album, it's actually a different story. Interesting to know. All right. So it's mentioned that your final act as guardian, if all should fail, is to protect the crystal, which is the heart of the world. So if there are physical and spiritual wardens in Illumi Shade, there must also be an enemy to defend against, again, the, the light and the dark. So from what I've gathered, there are darker forces that create imbalance and chaos throughout the world. So I'm wondering if you can provide further insight into this polarity, like how you guys are represented as the light. So how will you be representing the dark? Yes, this will come later because the story now from this album is, you know, The World's End is the single, like the, the title of our first single. So actually it's 
the end of the album. <laughs> we start with the end and we just, you know, we show what the Guardian went through and what happened. So the crystal got actually in the end destroyed. And I think then the next album or, you know, then the dark will be revealed like what it is and in what form and everything. But uh, we cannot say too much about it yet. I think it's really interesting that you're beginning at the end. You know, you're, it's very nonlinear that way, but I think that's an interesting start to the story. I'm excited. You got me more excited just saying that. Oh, my oh goodness. so cool. <laughs> so you're also establishing community in this world by allowing fans to become part of a tribe. And I think this is an exciting aspect to explore because it creates deeper interaction with and, and loyalty to the music. I personally, I played RPGs growing up, so this concept is familiar to me. So people generally want to feel part of something larger than themselves. And like, it's a fun escape from reality in a way. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so I took the tribe quiz and I'm favor. I think it fits me quite well. Yeah, it does it. Yeah, awesome. So I'm, I'm going to be sure to place the link to this quiz on the Metal Maven blog so everyone can find their place in the Lumi Shade. So I'm just wondering, what tribe is your character from? A guardian can be chosen from any of the tribes. Exactly, from any of the tribes. And unfortunately, I'm not allowed to say it. <laughs> I, I talked about uh, with, with, uh, with Tamara and the concert, and we were like, no, we, we have to reveal it later. Okay, so are you planning deeper levels of fan interaction with Illumishade by the time the album releases? Will we, the audience, be part of a world event? It's kind of like an RPG term where it's like everybody who's playing can be actively part of a live event scenario. Yeah, exactly. So as you said, what we wanted to create is actually like, a, you know, a community interaction and just an escape from reality. You actually, you said it perfectly before. So this was the, the biggest idea we had of this project. Uh, and you can not only dive into the project musically, but also story-wise. And we are working constantly on ideas, how we can do the interaction even more. So when this tribe quiz idea came up, we were all super excited because it's actually, we, we really liked the idea and so cool that so many people did it already. So we were like super happy to hear that. And yeah, so we are constantly thinking about ideas how we can integrate uh, the fans or the people uh, even more and so everybody feels part of this world and has a saying as well you know has has a character has a role yeah so constantly we're thinking about it and also how is it possible you know with all the resources we have we just have to be realistic like what can we do <laughs> so yeah so we are always gathering ideas together well, I think there's so much potential to create amazing energy during a performance by calling on different tribes in the audience to interact and become part of the show. So it's like you've opened up a whole other level of how fans can be part of the music. Yeah, this is actually one of the plans we have. Yeah, we are still figuring out how the, the best way will be. But exactly. So everybody feels that when, when we have the release show in May, that everybody knows their own tribes. And then, you know, you feel just connected and we are all in this together. And it's not just like you watch and we play, but it's like a union. So will the various cultures of Illumishade be expressed and represented on the album through a variety of musical styles? Or have you already established the sound and how it should be? Yeah, so I mean, the concept is still about these contrasts, right? So the album now is not really like, okay, we dedicate this song to um, this tribe and, blah, 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 and the other one to this tribe, but it's the story of the Guardian, the emotional journey and uh, of, of the Guardian, what, what happened from when the crystal was safe until the crystal got destroyed. And so this is an emotional journey, but you know, this is what, what I love about that that we are creating this new world. It gives us so many ideas about new stories, uh, about, you know, how to interaction to make this even bigger with the people or, yeah, just so much material for songs. And uh, I have so many ideas already in my head, but first we have to finish this one. 
but this this is uh for me it is super exciting i love fantasy i love to dive into the other stories and concepts and forget about the reality here and so i'm super excited that we are doing this as a team now with Illumi Shade. And yeah, it's just super cool, this journey and so many new experiences. Absolutely. So, well, now that we were talking about this well of creativity, so for this album, what was your songwriting and recording process? So, I mean, I it, it was my master thesis that I had to do. So um, I gathered ideas and I was very, very early. I, I went together, sat, sat together with Jonas and we were working on pre-productions because I don't know how to program drums or something like that. And so this is why we match really well together. Um, I think because I came with ideas, he put on his, his inputs, his ideas, and then I came with other ideas again. You know, it's like, uh, a back and forth like ping pong kind of for for most of the songs we did it like that uh, and some songs musically come only from from Jonas for example and all I added was some chords in a part that was like hey maybe let's try this you know so it's for every song it's a little bit different but mostly uh, we did it like ping pong effect <laughs> um, and also with the band when we were uh, rehearsing then you know stuff happens during the rehearsals and uh, somebody has a cool idea and then we we use it and it's actually really nice how, how this, the songs grew together yeah it's it's a totally new world for me I never really wrote uh, so so much music before and now I'm so happy that I can work with Jonas so uh, close together and also with with the band it's yeah it's just a very nice flow that we have yeah not to say being structured is bad but in in this way having that like kind of free flowing like very open ended way of creating songs was probably very helpful because it just allowed for more input and change and kind of just figuring out how you wanted all of this to be Yes, exactly. And we we also, we said, hey, everything is allowed. So if you feel like a blues solo, then do it, you know. <laughs> and if, if I feel like a really cheesy ballad, then hey, yes, because it fits the state of the Guardian at the moment, the emotional state. So that's why it, the album will be really uh, have many different vibes. Uh, because it's different emotions she goes through. So, uh, but of course, we make sure to always have a, you know, a red line in the song so that everything is kept together. But we are still experimenting, and I think I can also say we are still looking for like our, you know, it's the first album, and we are exploring ourselves. Like, what what do we want to do? What, how how do we write songs together? How it's everything is so new, but it's a journey, and I already learned so much, and yeah, it's just super exciting. <laughs> so, will we be graced with you playing the harp? And can you reveal any special guests or characters that will be featured? I know it's about the Guardian, but I didn't know if you had any special guest who played a special role in the album? Um, so we have, uh, so harp on this album, no, no harp, but uh, I play piano on the on the album. Yeah, so Miriam and me, we recorded it together. And so it's very nice. It's also very nice to have a girl in the band. I'm super happy that she's part of it. And special guests, yes, I hope it will work out. We are just in contact at the moment and I cannot say who and in what form because I just hope it will work out and yeah I'm, I'm super excited if this will come come like that like we planned it uh, I, I will be super happy so yes <laughs> you will see because <laughs> the album creation is like still in process but you, you have this first single ready to go is that the case right now yeah so you know with uh, the, a lot of uh, we, we were traveling and uh, playing so much with Elveti, so we didn't really have so much time in between the tours. And when we had, I was sick, so I couldn't record it as it was planned. <laughs> yeah, you never know what happens. And then, um, so now we had to postpone it a little bit, but now, uh, actually, I go... Well, okay, when you when you re release this video... Yeah, I will go... 
tomorrow, I can say. <laughs> tomorrow I will go to studio and finish everything uh, for four days. And then my part is done. And then just orchestration left and a few guitars. But most of it is, is done already. Okay, good. So you plan to release the whole album at some point this year? Oh, yes, yes. Spring. They don't, we don't have to wait much longer for this first part of the story. Exactly. It's just a small part of the whole world. And uh, yeah, yeah, we are constantly working on it. You know, also, we will reveal more and more, you know, to, to not make the waiting too long. Yeah, so we will release a few singles and then the album. And yeah, we just, yeah, it will always reveal more and more. Well, now that we've discussed the music, in more detail, I wanted to maybe talk about the visual language of Illumi Shade. So my background is graphic design. So with bands, I naturally analyze what my eyes see to reveal more about what my ears hear. So can you tell us more about the colors and sights of this world that will be experienced? And that could range from illustration, photography, costumes, and music videos. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. I mean, the visuals are very important, right? Always. And especially when you also, when you create a world. So all I had in mind was in the very beginning, okay, I want something dark, silver, gold, uh, blue, you know, uh, in this, this is how I see our world. Of course, now we're in a team and um, everybody has ideas and feels, I mean, Everybody feels it maybe in a different way, right? But I think the main thing is this. These colors are Illumi shade, I think. And it was very important for us so that we have an emblem uh, of every tribe. So people that do the tribe quiz, they also see something, right? So these emblems, they will, you will see them everywhere all the time. I mean, as you can see, the, the single, the, the artwork of the single now, it, it has the Illumi emblem on the on the front because yeah we just want people to to get the the emblems you know to see them all the time so this is very important that's good to know i was just i was curious about the visuals because it's just as important because it kind of like adds an extra layer of detail and experience to the album so is there anything I mean, this kind of goes into stage production, and I don't know if you can talk about it more, because I know the release show is coming up on May 22nd, so I didn't know what you can reveal about the actual physical experience you would like fans to have when either listening to the album or seeing a live performance. We are thinking about a lot of stuff, what we can do on the, on the live performance that is realistic. Uh, with our resources that we have, um, with the space that we have, right? And um, that have the best and most effect, exactly like, for example, uh, how can we make a union out of us and the, the crowd? Uh, maybe, for example, you know, when they see, okay, I'm this tribe, which tribe are you? Oh, oh you know, and stuff like that. And also, light-wise, we are still working. I mean, it's it's in May, so we, we have a few ideas how we want to do it, but we still have to figure it out more and more deeply and deeply so that we have this round concept going on the, on the live shows as well. So I'm looking forward. This will be the next step when the madness of the <laughs> music uh, album and stuff will, will be done. <laughs> How are you going to kind of display yourself on stage? Because you're the guardian, you know, you're a vital character in this story. So I didn't know, I've seen some of what your kind of costume would look like for the photo shoot, but I didn't know what you had planned to, because there's always, there's always like an extra level you have to add when you go on to stage, you like with your makeup and everything. I didn't know if you had anything planned, like that you wanted to do for yourself. Yes, I have something planned, but I cannot say it, right? Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> That's all right. I do. I, I will ask the question and you can either give me the answer or say, I can't tell you right now, but I at least have to ask. So how has this process and path felt from the moment of inception to where it currently is with the new single being released on January 31st, which is the day this podcast comes out? I mean, you'll soon open the doors to a new realm that you spent so much time and energy to create, and it's getting very real. So I was just wondering how you're feeling about that. Yes, it is. I say it like the third time. It's very exciting. <laughs> I am. I am super excited. 
Yeah, exactly. It's just really, I'm just curious how everything will go, how people will react to it. I just, and I'm just happy to finally see the result, you know, because also before the 1st of January, because we came out, also, how do you say, on Instagram and just social medias on 1st of January. And before that, everything was just theory and preparation. But then, yeah, people see you and start the interaction and stuff. And so then it's real. And now, but we haven't <laughs> any music out yet. And now I'm just super excited about it. I, I'm very happy with the song. I'm, yeah, I, yeah. So I hope people will enjoy it. I hope so much and we will see how it will go. But yeah, just the whole process. I learned so much already and it's so intense, so much to do. But uh, I mean, we do it with the heart. So, I mean, it's the best. I mean, obviously it's, it's great because you got your thesis complete and you have your master's degree. So, you know, it's cool, but then there's the real world. And of course we changed a lot as well from then, because that was already in September and from September to now the songs, we changed it a lot. Some, some, we even changed like the whole groove of the song, but the bass is the same, um, yeah, so I'm just super excited and so happy when we actually can release something for the first time. Yeah, and then it will be reality. So World's End is going to be the first single and the first real look into Illumi Shade. So I'm just wondering why that song for the first single? Uh, we were discussing it a lot, but it is the song that represents us the most. Yeah, like it's it's not easy to choose a song at the moment because we have so many variations and everything. But this is this is how we want Illumi Shade to sound. This is representing us the most. So now that you have Illumi Shade, how and since we're on the topic of balance, how do you plan on balancing Illumi Shade and Elveti? Yeah, we just. Uh, go in the gaps of El <laughs> It's very, it's, it's, it's actually very simple. <laughs> when we have gaps, we, there is Illumiche time. When there is El time, then El <laughs> It's, uh, it's actually, it's super cool because, uh, yeah, we know El is always first prio and then, um, yeah, we just do our best to juggle it around and, uh, yeah, just make as much possible do you think it's going to be better for you to always constantly have events happening or are you going to plan little little breaks in between for yourself? Yeah, I could feel it last year in 2019. I mean, we were we were traveling so much with Elveti. It was such a great year, but it was, you know, so many shows. It can also be exhausting as well, you know, when you don't have time to get your energy going again at home because I had to do the master degree and then Illumi Shade and la la. So now I really feel, okay, I have to take my time to, and just do nothing if it's just for a day. Yeah, no, it's important. You don't want to burn out because then it affects everything else. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Then you you cannot be creative anymore and everything is just under pressure and it's not good. I mean, I could also, you know, small things, but I was sick when I had to be in the studio because we were on a tour and the tours can be exhausting. And then, of course, I maybe get sick and then I have to sing in the studio. It's just not possible. So I have to learn, okay, Fabi, you're not a robot, you're not a machine. Uh, and yeah, I'm, you know, it's always a journey and... Uh, yeah, I will always learn. And but at the moment, I will sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Because now it's ramping up again. Because you had a little break. Because I think your last tour with LVT that was with Lacuna Coil and Infected Rain that was in November. Yeah, exactly. We were seven weeks on the road until Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had a little bit of a break, and now you're back in the thick of it again. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we will go in April uh, with Elvati. So that's why now it was a great time to prepare everything for Illumi Shade. So as, as I said, we jungle in the gaps. <laughs> so I like to read, Daryl going back into the Illumi Shade story again, kind of to wrap everything up. So, I mean, I like to personally read theories about what our own universe is. And many say we're part of a larger entity or source. You know, if you look at structures of galaxy networks and neurons in our own brain, there's a very striking similarity 
you know, the micro is the macro and vice versa. So I was wondering, is Illumishade more than just a place, but something that is truly alive? Oh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> Ooh, that's a deep question. <laughs> I know we just went from really lighthearted stuff and then I just throw this question at you, right? Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, I think what I can say is, I mean, you already mentioned it so, so nicely. Uh, you know, for us, it's an escape from reality and everybody maybe feels different when listening to the music or diving into the story and just everybody should have a place as an escape and a safe place uh, in the world of Illumishade and it's for everybody different, I think, and everybody can interpret it in their own way. So at the heart of everything, what do you want to tell people through the world of Illumishade? What do we want to tell the people? It's maybe a bit similar like the question before, my answer, because there is not or not yet like one message that we want to send out. All we want to do at the moment is just create a place where we can escape to and uh, dive into not only with music, but also with, yeah, with the whole world concept and stuff and uh, just create a new place. I think everybody can get something different maybe out of it. Yeah. So there is not one message we want to send out or not yet. Who knows what, what will come, what we will reveal and, you know, it's also a journey for us. We are also still uh, going with the flow with the, and discovering more of the world. So, But for the moment, our main goal is just to escape reality for a while and just dive into a new, whole new world. So just, it's what is it, the call to adventure? <laughs> the call to adventure, exactly. <laughs> well, that's all the questions I have for you today, Fabi. I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to talk with me more about your project. Yeah, thank you so, so much for having me. It was really a pleasure. Super cool. Thank you. You're welcome. To learn more about the enchanting world of Illumi Shade and to purchase tickets to their album release show on May 22nd in Zurich, visit illumishade.ch. Visit metalmavenpodcast.com for links to Fabi's social profiles, videos, and read the full transcript of this interview. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to subscribe to Metal Maven Podcast on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google.